Hi, our topic for today is are combinations with repetitions allowed? So in, in order to introduce the topic, uh, let me uh, do an, ex an, an example first. Example 4.5. Let's choose two elements from the set A, B, C, D, E. How many different combinations? are possible if repetitions are allowed. allowed. Solution here we'll just uh, write a solution without an, an idea. We'll just list them all. It's a fairly short list. So generally, it could be done effectively. So, um, so what would the, uh, that be? Uh, let me go and write one AA. Of course, order is not important. So I'm allowed AA, but, uh, but order is, is, is irrelevant. Actually, let me write probably the easiest way to do it. Let me go AB, AC, AD, AE. And B A B B B C B D B E C A C B C C C D C A who else D A D B D C D D D E E A E B E C E D E E. This is a very uh, uh, this is a schema that's very easy to write down. Why? Because it's five by five square. Because I start with A on first, and I list all the possible uh, options for the second one, and then I go with the same with the B, the same with the C, the same with the D, and the same with the E. I'm allowing repetition A A up to E E. But what happens? I need to cross some of them because I did a double listing because these are combinations or there's not important so AB is the same as BA. So I cross those where actually a later letter comes in front of it. The easiest way is if I need to choose one of them, better to choose one where A precedes B and reject when B uh, precedes A. The same way I reject CA because of AC, CB because of BC. D B because of B D D A E and the same reason actually I reject everybody who's below the diagonal. So altogether now I can just do the count. So the total count would be what? Um, by the way, the writing here would be C five elements choosing two and then when I when I put the bar above, that means that I'm allowing repetition. That's a standard symbol. So how much should that be? I just add them up. One, five, plus four, plus three, plus two, plus one, which is what? Six and six is 12 and three is 15. All right, that sounds like uh, no, an easy solution. But of course, uh, it's not too promising as a strategy because of what if I have longer list and then if I take like know, ten of them, and when I choose uh, three or four, then this list would be very, very long and complicated to control. Um, but uh, we can actually come up with a formula, and that formula is in our theorem four five one. So, we can say the following, C and R with repetition equals N plus R minus 1, choose R, done. So there's a formula. And it is very interesting how we derive this formula. So proof, proof is not the 
nice and has that uh, famous idea of stars and bars. So here it is. Uh, imagine that I have n spots because I have to choose n of them. So here is n spots. So n spots. And I need to fill them in with the numbers, let's say 1 to r. Sorry, 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 sorry. R spots, because I'm choosing R, R spots, and to choose them with, uh, and to fill them in with the numbers one, two, three, two, n. So what can I do? I can say the following: since the order doesn't matter, I will first choose as many ones as I as I need, as I decide. So I need to choose R of them. So. Uh, first, I'll take care of ones, either taking no ones, maybe I don't want any, or a few, or all of them to be ones. But whatever happens, I'll say the following. Take ones, take ones, take ones, and then stop, wherever I stop. So, okay, let's say I'll stop somewhere taking ones. Then I'll take twos. Maybe I, I don't take them at all, you know. So let me say I, I don't take twos. So I immediately said, stop, don't even take any. Then I say, take threes, let's say I'll decide. As I said, this doesn't really, really matter. So I just keep taking elements, since the order doesn't matter, I just uh, choose them in natural order. And then whenever I'm done with one element, I go to the next element in the list. And at the end, I actually, I might choose nth element, or maybe not at all, if I already filled in. So then, with this idea, actually, I don't even need to tell you who is here, because you know that before the first stop, it must be one. So generally, I can just tell you, and that's what we call the idea of stars and bars. I just say star, star, star. So when I say star, star, you know, that because that's before the first bar, that these are ones. I don't need to tell you that. What happens here? between first bar and the second bar, who did I skip here? Because there was nobody in the, I skipped two, so there are, there are no stars there. So if there are no stars in between, that means no twos. And then this star, because it's the third one, a uh, third uh, time, uh, that time uh, um, in introducing a new element, that must be three, I don't need to tell you, I just have to take. And then, and, and, I, and I keep taking the same element I see, I, until I see the next bar, and so on and so on. So generally, configuration of choosing, of filling in R spots with N elements, that configuration is the same as configuration of stars and bars. So I need actually what? I need to place in R stars because there are spots, each of them will have star at the end. With, of course, different meaning, because every star has a meaning according to after which bar it is coming. And then how many bars do I have? Uh, bars, I have, and my, uh, uh, R stars, yes, and then I have uh, N minus one uh, bars. Why? Because there are n letters that I can use, and uh, n elements, and then after, uh, when I stop using first one, I need first bar. When I stop using the second one, I need the second bar. When I stop using or not using at all, third bar, and so on. But then after the end, I don't need the bar because I'm done. So just I need after n minus one, so there are n minus one bars. So generally, I can say the following: each configuration is actually configuration. What? I can think of all this now as one single word. Like a binary word of length n plus length n plus r minus 1 because there are stars and n minus 1 bars. And then what? I have, what is my only freedom? I know that I need R stars and N minus 1 bars, so my only freedom, like in one, one 
problem that we did in section 4.3 by only freedom is where do I choose to put stars? The rest of it will be bars. So that means choose are places to host stars. So that means among n plus r minus 1, you need to choose r places to host stars. And that's, it. that's a formula. That's all. Number, so actually every um, combination with repetition was actually coded coded by a star bar uh, sequence and different words have different sequences and the backwards so the count is the same. Very nice and elegant idea and you will see how nicely it will solve some of the problems that we'll do. So here it is. Sometimes I refer to this uh, formula. Sometimes I just introduce stars and bars in, in the middle of the problem. So let me say the following. The question is, example, four, five, two. It says the following, how many solutions are there for the equations x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 equals 15, x1, x2, x3, x4 uh, are in z integer and also they are greater than or equal to zero. So non-negative integer. So, uh, so generally I can say the following, what would be combinatorial story about this equation? I say I have 15 apples, I have four kids, and I want to distribute these 15 apples among them, and then in how many ways can I do it? So generally, why is this related to the previous problem? Actually, I will not even connect to recognize combinations and all that. I will just introduce my stars and bars. So generally what I'll do is the following. I have actually uh, four kids here. So here is what I'll do. I'll put stars as long as I want apples for the first kid. Then I'll put the bar to say stop it there. And then again, I keep stars for the second kid. I stop, then stars for the third kid, I stop, and then the stars for the last one. And that's it. Now this determines which kid gets uh, how many uh, apples. And then what? What is this? This is configuration of how many stars do I have. A star stands for every apple. So I have 15 stars, and I have three bars. So there are 18 symbols, I need to choose 3 to host bars, or 15 to choose stars, you know the combination, here's the answer, 18 choose 3. And that would be 18 times 17 times 60, or 3 times 2 times 1, this is 1, 6, 1, 3, so it's 48 times 17, which is 8, 1, 6. Here it is, very nice and elegant solution. And then, so, um, let, uh, let me show you one problem that actually is in the homework, and, and just variation of this problem. What if I ask the same question, x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 is 15, but then I make restrictions and I say, oh, I want that make, to make it sure that x1 got at least 3 here. I especially needs x2 gets at least 2, and then x3 and x4 doesn't matter. And then I have little troubles then because I cannot do this machinery, but it's very easy. Actually, I can say the following. I can, uh, I can do it more formally or, or, or less formally. I can do substitution of a variable. So I can say, oh, or just do it combinatorially and say the following. All right. First, since I need to give three apples for sure to the first kid and two to the second, let's do that. So let the first person get three apples. Like immediately. The second one gets two apples. 
Can they get more? Yes, maybe, because nobody said they cannot get more. But let me do what I have to. And then what happens? Now, how much is left? So I have now to a new distribution after that assignment. Now I have 10 apples, because 5 were already distributed, and these 10 can go wherever. So either they go to Y3, to Y4, or extras to Y1 and Y2. Of course, when I get Y1 and Y2, I add 3 and 2 that they already got. And then what is this? This is the same problem as before. Now what? Um, I have uh, 10 stars, I have 3 bars, so it will be now 13, choose 3, and that will be 13 times 12 times 11 over 3 times 2. 1, 2, which is 22 times 13, which is what? 286, I mean, yeah. 263, 286. Uh, you can say yes, but why aren't we counting those 3 and 2? They influence the, the outcome, but they don't influence the variety of my choices because we count all the configurations. Since all of them must have 3 and 2, your only freedom is what do you do with the rest of those 10 because first 5 are, are already determined. So generally this was the way to reduce this question that was a little trickier to the one where we do have machinery. And then one more example that is basically the same, it might sound different, and that one is example 453, that one might sound familiar already. It says a donut shop sells chocolate, raspberry, plain, and lemon filled donuts. So chocolate, raspberry, plain, and lemon. So it's four types. And they have enough at least 20 of each. Then, and I need to choose 20 donuts. So a collection of 20 donuts. All right, then, in how many ways can I make that collection? Basically, that's the same as solving the equation because C stands, chocolate stands for X1, for X2, for X3, or X4. So generally what do I do? I have 20 stars, because I have 20 donuts. So for each donut I say star, and then since there are four varieties, I have three bars for the stopping. So this is already solution. So solution is what? Altogether, I, this is bar, not 31. Three bars, so there are 23 symbols, I need to choose where to choose three stoppers and then that would be that would be one seven seven one and then you will see in the homework there are, uh, there are some variations when uh, certain cert, uh, maybe uh, one of the types of donuts is a little short. What if I had only 18 of those? Then you have to remove cases that use heavy chocolate donuts or something like that. So we have to do little interventions. But this is uh, the basic configuration. All right.